I'm Helen Campbell and welcome to my channel The Wonders of Watercolour. In this video we are going to be painting a step-by-step -step looser style of watercolour painting. So if you're used to my normal style then this is slightly different, a different technique which will get you faster results and is suitable for everybody even those who maybe haven't painted before so it can be suitable for beginners also. So don't worry if you haven't painted, just follow my technique. Stay to the end of this video because I'm really excited to share with you an upcoming tutorial that I have that if you enjoy this type of painting this will really really help you on your journey. So let's get started but before we dive in remember if you like my channel and you're new here hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any future tips, tricks or hacks and it's a free way of letting YouTube know that you're enjoying my content. So let's dive in. Okay, so before we start to paint, we'll need to get our drawing done. As you can see, I've done a really simple line drawing of an outline of a coffee cup with one or two of the markings and things that I'm going to paint in already here. You can see I've just painted in a few of the bubbles and a little mark where the hot chocolate powder is sprinkled. Just a really, really simple outline. You'll also need some kitchen roll to mop up any splats of on pat your paper dry with. I'm using a 0.5 mechanical pencil, a 0 0.1 um, drawing pen, this is from Pilot but anyone will do. I've got two watercolour brushes, a number six size spotter from Rosemary & Co and a number four spotter from Jackson's but you can use any brushes that you have, don't worry about getting these. This is a really loose style and is suitable for everybody. So let's get started and I ought to mention that if you really do struggle with your drawings then you may like to watch this video where I will share with you my drawing hack which will help you get your drawing down really really quickly. It says that it's for botanical art but don't worry it's suitable for absolutely everything so if you struggle watch this video. So the first thing I want to do here is create a background wash for the coffee uh, to go around the coffee cup. So I have on my palette mixed a very watery mix of a brown colour. I've used burnt amber. It doesn't really matter just as long as we have a background on. So what I'm going to do is just paint water, just plain water onto the area around the, the coffee cup itself. So this is where the background will be really really quickly no fuss because we're going to do this is a really loose style contemporary looking painting so just pop on just where you want the color to be and careful not to go outside the pencil line on this part here it doesn't really matter around the cup because if it's if it splurges and it's kind of um, goes into that area it doesn't matter too much and whilst it's still wet, I'm going to drop in some of this brown colour with a little bit. I've got Davies Grey so that it can have a little bit of contrast here and there. So this is just our background colour. And this will just drop in without any fuss where you've applied your water. Okay. Just all over to give it that lovely loose feel. And I'm using my brush just to make the paint go where I want it to go. So even though it's a loose painting, we can still control the paint a little bit here and there. And you don't have to be too fussy with it. Like I said, I'm going to put some more water at the top here. Staying within that pencil line so we've got this lovely background to work from. This is just plain water. Um, the paper I'm using here is 300 GSM and I never go heavier than that. I really don't see any need and I don't stretch my paper either because again I don't see the point. The paper will buckle as you paint anyway and it will sort itself out when it dries by going flat again and that's fine. So I'm going to put a little bit of grey here. I'm using Davies just for a little bit of colour. And just use whatever colour you want to really on your background. There are no rules here. So just like so. A bit more here and there. 
you know, I didn't wet the paper here, as you can see, which is why the paint is going on slightly thicker. So all over, like that. So now we have a nice background to the cup, the cup and saucer. Now, if you find that you get any overlays or blooms, by blooms I mean when the paint kind of um, creates a watermark, a tide mark, I actually quite like that. Um, don't worry, like I said, this is a lovely loose style watercolour painting. We don't need to be too, too careful. Now, have a look at your background. You may think that um, some of the areas may want to be darker than others. I might put a little bit more towards the top here. It's up to you. Make your dark round, make your background as light or dark as you want to. So I'm going to let that dry and then we can start to think about the other colours that we're going to need for the other parts. So while I'm waiting for that to dry I'm going to add some water to this area next to the handle of the cup to give it a little bit of shadow to make this handle jump out. So plain water here and just think about how far you want your colour to go. I'm going to put a nice um, sort of dark grey colour here. Now make sure that this bit's dry because if you put your water here and it's still damp then obviously what will happen is your paint will blend into this area which we don't want. So I have a mix here of a brown, again I've used burnt umber with a little bit of a dark blacky brown colour. So we're just going to pop that in there like that and we can add some more contrast to that a bit later once it's dry. Towards the outside edge of this, I'm going to put a little bit of a colour that I use a lot on my botanical paintings, which is Payne's Grey, which is a lovely kind of um, bluey grey tone. And it just makes it look a little bit more natural as we come into this cup where we have these two colours merging together. If it's bleeding a little bit, as mine is here, onto the... Um, but the base colour that we've put around the outside, don't worry about it. We're going to cover that up later anyway. So try not to, but if it does, don't worry. And I'm just using plain water here to blend these two colours together. Nice and easy. And I'm going to just put a tiny bit of Payne's Grey here as we hit the outside edge of the spoon. So now we've got a little bit more shape going on here and I'm going to put a shadow in here as well. We can darken this up later but just so that we know where we're going with the colours. Don't worry if you're watercolour, if you're new to watercolour painting, don't worry if it doesn't look perfect to begin with. You'll see that as you get used to painting that part of the process is that it looks untidy. So don't worry if it doesn't look as you would want it to. Keep going. That's the key. Okay. Just going to add that in. Right up to the end. I'm actually going to put a little bit of blue in here. I'm going to put a little bit of a colour um, indigo, which I also really like to give a little bit of shading. This is actually quite strong, it might need diluting a little bit, but that's fine. Just using the tip of the brush here. Okay. So already this painting's got form. You can see if you sort of stand back a little bit and have a look, you can see that it's beginning to take shape. Okay, like this. Really simple. And I'm also going to add some of the burnt umber in a weak form just here to start these. Again it's blurry because the watercolour paper is still damp but that doesn't matter it will add to the water line a bit later on. That's fine. I'm going to let that dry. I have water on my brush again and I'm going into the centre where we have the coffee itself. 
there's a little bit of pigment still on my brush, but it doesn't matter. Now, what the, the important thing here is, because we have water bubbles in the center here, we're not going to paint every single one of them in. It's all about illusion with this painting. So we want to have a little bit of light where the highlights are. So it's important that the, the colors that we put in are the lightest color of the highlight. So once again, I'm going to drop in my burnt umber and I'm also going to take a little bit of it onto the edge here, this bit here. I um, might also put a yellow ochre, which is a sort of um, a paler colour. And if you're not great with colour mixing or if you can't figure out which colours to use within your palette, you may want to watch this video where I show you how I colour match for my botanicals. But again, this can be used anywhere. So don't be put off by the fact that it's just botanicals. Again, I'm just adding a little bit of the indigo mix. That I have. These are really, really watery mixes. I ought to say again that these are really, really pale mixes. We wanted to have a nice blurry look, but anywhere that you think that you want to just add a little bit of depth, just pop it in here and there. So now we have a really kind of contemporary looking, messy painting. Okay, so have a little think about where you want to put your other colours. I'm switching brushes now to my thinner brush and I'm going to put some Payne's Grey on my palette with maybe a little bit of lamp black just to make it a little darker. So I'm going to add this to the inside of the spoon. This is directly onto the paper. So this is wet on dry. Okay, so just to create a little bit of form on the spoon itself. The reason I'm not doing wet on wet this time is because I want to have more control of my paint. I want this to have a sharper edge like this. So this can, can come down like that. I'm also going to put some of this color, which is, like I said, it's just Payne's Gray with a tiny bit of lamp black. And I'm going to add this around the highlight where the spoon is, the little metal bit on the spoon. That can go there. We'll enhance that highlight. And I'm also going to put a little bit of it here just to darken up a few areas here and there and sharpen up that line. Okay, and yet again, I'm just going to blend that through to soften it up. And using the residual water on my brush just to blend that in. Because the, the, the actual spoon is metal and we want it to look as if it's got some shape and a little bit of a highlight. I'll put that in there. I think that looks great. Now for the handle of the spoon, you can paint that whatever color you want to. I think I'm going to dab that off. I'm going to maybe put a, a nice ready color for that. We'll change it from the, the boring white. There's still a little bit of residual color on my brush, but don't worry. Just make sure that you put your water where you want your colour to go. And you can paint it whatever colour you want to. Like I said, I'll probably do a red, a reddy orange colour. I'm going to put some Scarlet Lake, which is a lovely, vibrant. And I'm also going to put a little bit of Indian yellow in with it just to give it that orangey look. And you can see how that drops in there really nicely. I'm just using the tip of my brush again to blend that in. Like so, and I'm going to just get some paint on its own to add a little bit of a darker colour here on the outside edge. It's all about creating illusion and form. Okay, I'm using my brush, blending it into the paper with some clean water, having dampened, dampened it down on my paper towel. So that's just giving that a nice kind of three-dimensional look. 
while we're waiting for that to dry, let's add some detail here. So back to the plain water and just going to put some brown. I'm going to use a brown colour. I'm going to use a colour made by Daniel Smith. This is called Piemonte Genuine. Um, like I said, don't worry if you don't have these colours. Use any colour that you have. You want it to be darker in the inside of the cup. Okay, I'm just going to put some here where we have the the hot chocolate or the sprinkles that we have on our coffee. I'm going to go quite heavy handed here. You want it to look as if that's been swirled and sprinkled inside your coffee, like so. Like, just drop it in. Don't be fussy, don't be frightened of it. And just put a few dots here and there. You can go around some of these highlights as well. It already looks like somebody sprinkled some hot chocolate into your coffee. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of tone onto here as well because I think it looks a little bit too flat and I've worked around that little highlight at the same time. Okay. We have some highlights that we need to paint in. These um, little ones here and there, but we'll wait for it to dry. I'm going to put, I'm, I'm fli flitting between the grey colours that I have and the others. So just keep putting them in until you're happy with the depth of colour that's there. Going back to my smaller brush and now that this is dry here, this bit, I'm going to just put a little bit of a darker colour at the base to give it a little bit more form and just keep looking at your colours to see if there's anything you can strengthen whilst you're here. I want this to dry completely before I start to put any of the where the um, where the coffee goes but I'm dropping in some of the darker colour. This is just brown and black mixed together. Okay like that. I'm going to let that dry and then we'll come back to these parts here. So I've I've gone back to my original mix of colour and I'm just dropping in wet on dry to create a little tide mark for where the coffee cup was put down. I think it just gives it a little bit more realism here and there. Don't be too fussy, it's all about illusion. We're going to splatter it with coffee looking stains in a moment anyway. Just flip between your browns so that you have some bits of it darker than others. And your blacks, your blacks and your browns, whatever you have. Okay, I'm at this point going to Take my brush, I'm using my number six again, and literally flick onto it, because I think this could be our cappuccino sprinkles, <laughs> or anything that you have. And if you wanted to add some bigger drops and pull them out, you could do like a splatter of coffee like so just to make it look a little bit more splatty I'm just using the tip of my brush here to do little sort of spidery shapes here and there and maybe some black you can be really creative with this like that we're going to let this dry and then I'm going to put some detail in around these little highlights Right, I'm beginning to add some darker shadow around this area here. I'm using my number four spotter and I've just got the existing colour that I've mixed on the palette. The, the lamp black with a little bit of the brown colour that we had and I just wanted to enhance some of the shading. 
like so and anywhere else that you feel that you're going to need this colour and using my bigger brush just to blend that through. You want it to merge together. You can see how relaxed this, this style of painting is. It doesn't matter, I've gone outside the pencil line here because we're going to be doing something with that later. I'm happy with the spoon. I might just add a little bit more just to darken this bit here. And now I've got my lamp black mixed with my burnt sienna or burnt umber. It doesn't matter which. Just be careful that it doesn't go to a kind of greeny tone. But now what we're going to do is wet on dry. I'm hoping this is dry enough. I'm going to start to paint in these little bubbles. Going around the highlight using the tip of my brush to create these little bubbles of coffee foam that we have. Just go around in a circle, leaving a highlight in the middle. Okay, and you can strengthen that highlight a bit later if you want to, but we're just going to have a few here and there. And I'm going to just wet the paper and give it a few more swirls. To strengthen. I'm going to let that dry. So while, while this is drying, I thought this would be a really good opportunity to start making it more of a line and wash type painting. I have my point, my 0 0.1 ink pen, pilot drawing pen, okay, use whatever you have, it doesn't have to be as fine, we want it to be really loose anyway, so I'm just going to zoom out a little so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm literally just using the tip of the brush and I'm outlining these little squiggles that I've done, okay, I think there are different ways you can do line and wash, this is how I do it. And where the little gaps are, where I've literally thrown the paint on, we can go around those to make them look as if they are deliberate. Around the outside of the saucer, I like a double line like this. I think it looks really cool and really contemporary. So don't make it too tidy. Go around it really sort of almost haphazardly using your brush. If you're using a thicker one, that's fine. And we wanted to have a sort of painterly double edge like so. I'm just going around the outside, exaggerating certain parts of it. Again, where the coffee cup hits the saucer, we can do this. But making sure that it's meant to look deliberate. Okay, any lines make them look deliberate. Even if you want to, your highlights. I'm going to continue this in time lapse. So there we have the pen outlining all the little bits that we want to do. Now you can carry on painting in your little bubbles here. I've outlined a few of them. I don't want to go too mad. I want it to look a little bit loose and contemporary. So I'm going to leave those be. You can be as bold or as subtle as you want to. You can carry on painting around these little dots if you want to, your splats here and there. It's entirely up to you. The sky is the limit with this one. Now, at the beginning of this video, I said to you that I have a really exciting video coming up next week if you'd like to stay tuned for that. I'm going to be sharing with you something really exciting in this video because I want you to see how I've created the photograph to paint this from. It's a little bit of a, a secret hack that I'm going to share with you, so stay tuned for that one. But in the meantime, join in. I really hope you enjoy painting this beautifully contemporary little watercolour that will literally take you about an hour to do. So stay tuned, everybody. Thank you for joining me, and until next time.